Today I want to talk about one of the best things that you can either build or buy to really help improve your 3D printing setup. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out this video. I hope you guys enjoy it, learn a little something, and if you like what you see, definitely consider subscribing for a lot more 3D printing videos to come in the future. So my recent 3D printing related videos on the channel have revolved around my little mini build series and project of building this custom enclosure setup for my two Creality CR10 printers. So I had two main reasons why I wanted to build this 3D printing enclosure setup. The first simply was that I ran out of space. My first 3D printer, the CR10 V2, I had set up on a small table upstairs in my home office. And that setup works really great for the first few years of having the printer. I was able to print PLA, PETG, TPU, and some other materials really successfully just having the printer sitting on the table exposed to the ambient environment of the room. But as my printing projects at home started to ramp up and I needed a second printer to support my workload and throughput, um, I simply just ran out of space. That first table was not big enough to fit a second 3D printer. And this past summer, I did indeed purchase my second 3D printer, a Creality CR10S Pro V2. Um, so with that being said, I knew that I needed more room. So instead of buying another table for my office upstairs, I just knew that I wanted to build this enclosure. The second reason, which is really the most important reason, is a health and material reason. Uh, so the first thing that I'll talk about is, as some of you might know who are well acquainted with 3D printing and 3D printing materials, as you start printing uh, higher grade engineering level materials like ABS, ASA, nylon, and some others, uh, those materials can emit some pretty gnarly fumes and particulates as you start melting the plastic. So with my first printing setup being upstairs in my home office, that's not something I wanted to be exposed to hours upon end uh, since I've been working from home quite a bit over the past few years. Uh, so I wanted to move my printers from the office upstairs down into the garage here to get away from any fumes, particulates that are uh, emitted from melting those plastics while I'm printing parts out of higher engineering level materials uh, when I start using them for my car projects and whatnot. So that was the big one was I didn't want to be breathing that stuff in so I wanted to build an enclosure set up to enclose all of those particulates and odors and be able to suck those out and blow them outside. Uh, the second part of that reason was that, as some of you also probably know, uh, with higher engineering grade level materials, you also need an enclosed environment to print those parts successfully. So especially like ABS needs a heated and enclosed environment to avoid warping and cracking issues from uh, improper cooling and heating while the part is printing. Uh, so all like the high level machine, 3D printer machines like Stratasys and things of that sort, they actually come enclosed with a heated build chamber uh, because those higher grade materials need a heated ambient environment so that they can print successfully. So that was really the second reason also was that I could start printing higher grade materials in my setup here at home. So with all that being said, I want to take you over here and show you all of the unique features that I incorporated into this build because this is definitely one thing that you can do to really help improve the quality and repeatability um, of your 3D printing projects, whether it be for home use, personal use, or for a uh, professional business setting as well. Now I would say a majority of desktop hobbyist level 3D printers that you can buy for under $1,000 do not come already enclosed. So this is a good alternative um, to building an enclosure setup around a 3D printer you might already have. Well, let's first talk about the main structure and shelving unit that I used as the frame and core structure of this entire setup. So this is a kind of industrial shelving unit. It's kind of called a boltless shelving unit that has these oblong holes with like riveted uh, components. So there's no fasteners required to assemble this shelf. And I'll include links for everything that I used in the description below. So I use basically an industrial shelving unit system um, as the basis for the frame of the enclosure setup. The overall uh, shelving structure is four feet long by two feet deep by six feet tall. Now there is a caveat there, I had to build an extension off of the back of the shelving system, which I'll get to in a second, but that's the dimensions of the main shelving system that I actually purchased off of the website. 
I really like these industrial style shelving systems that have the ability to adapt and modify where you place the shelves because depending on your 3D printers that you use or your setup that with whatever equipment that you have, you can adapt and modify the space uh, that each shelf gives you. So obviously the first main compartment of the enclosure here is the biggest space that I need. So I had to lower that shelf pretty far down. And then the second shelf here I had, you know, it's a pretty small space just for how Using some uh, my vacuum and some other materials that I use um, in between prints and whatnot and then the space down below here I needed a little bit more of a larger opening so that I could uh, put my uh, watertight storage tote where I store all of my uh, filament and also my toolbox so with a system like this, with the kind of boltless industrial style shelving, it really allows you to adapt and modify the setup based on uh, your particular printer and how you want to set it up yourself. So I highly recommend using this kind of industrial boltless style rivet uh, shelving system. Next, let's talk about the materials I use to build the walls of the uh, actual enclosure setup. And I will say that I tried to find materials that had dim common off-the-shelf dimensions uh, that were nominal, that matched the sizes that I needed so that I minimized any unnecessary cutting. I still had to do some cutting, but it definitely helped to eliminate drastic changes to the stuff I was buying from the store. Uh, so the materials that I found was this really cool, it's like a coated uh, blackboard and whiteboard combo material that comes like this off the shelf uh, from Home Depot and the size was two feet by four feet uh, so I did have to cut about a foot off the bottom so that it matched the length for the height of the actual 3d printing area but I was really happy that I found this material because I wanted the inside of the enclosure to be white and the outside of the enclosure to be black so finding this already kind of pre-treated like this for off the shelf uh, helped me to eliminate a lot of painting, um, which painting can get messy and you know it's just nice to have this pre-coated from the get-go. But this material it's like a pressed kind of MDF style particle board um, and it's really great because you know as the names or the coating kind of style suggests this is a blackboard so you can use chalk and make notes on here and erase it and same goes for the inside. If you want to use uh, dry erase markers and you want to make little notes to yourself like oh I'm printing at this temperature or you know this is how many parts that I have left to make blah 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 and then you just use you know an eraser and wipe it right off um, so it's really cool to be able to have that uh, pre-coated and everything I think it was about eight dollars for each sheet um, so the you know kind of the standard size for plywood is two feet by four feet um, so it was about eight bucks a sheet and this was cheaper than your standard sheet of plywood and I think this is about an eighth of an inch thick if I'm not mistaken so I ended up needing about four of these um, to do each uh, sidewall and then I needed two panels to do the back wall and those panels are placed horizontally so like I said this is a four foot long uh, shelving unit so it was perfect size um, to have them kind of overlay horizontally and I had to lay them sideways and so then I had to use a second one where I kind of cut it in half um, to uh, get to full enclosure of the back lower part of the enclosure, which is what you can see all of those hardware bits used for there. That's connecting the top and bottom piece together. So if you're looking at building walls around your shelving system, I highly recommend this stuff. Like I said, it comes pre-coated, it's pretty cheap, and it's really cool to be able to uh, use it to make little notes to yourself. I've already used it for that, so it's been really handy to have that as well. Plus the white coating on the inside of the enclosure here just gives it a really clean like laboratory look to your 3D printing enclosure setup. So the next piece that I wanna talk about is probably one of my favorite pieces on how it turned out was the lighting system. So the lighting system that I use for this enclosure setup um, is actually a set of cabinet lights. So these are kind of lights that you're supposed to put underneath your cabinets in your kitchen to kind of give an ambiance to your kitchen. Uh, so these are LED cabinet under cabinet lights that I got off Amazon. The kit was about $60 and it comes with these kind of brackets that you screw into the uh, wood here. So this is the bottom side of the top shelf. So it worked great um, and it came with six of the lights. So I positioned them uh, evenly um, and spaced them evenly across the whole system here. Um, and it comes with all the wiring and little brackets that you need um, to, to hook it up. And so you can either get a dimmer switch so you can give your printer some mood lighting and you can dim the lights down or you can take that off and you can just put a simple flip switch so I just kind of mounted that with some double-sided tape right up here so it's super easy for me to come in and turn the lights on and off to the printing setup 
So these lights worked out really great. There's no need for any batteries or worrying about having batteries run out on you. Uh, the LED lights do provide some amount of heat, so I guess it kind of helps to heat the ambient environment, but it's not. These lights also don't get crazy hot like a standard incandescent bulb does, so you don't have any risks of overheating or melting different things uh, with your lighting setup. So I highly recommend using some style of LED under cabinet lights uh, for your 3D printing enclosure setup. So the next thing that I want to talk about that I kind of hinted at earlier was the fact that I had to build a little bit of an extension off of the back of the shelf here uh, to be able to fully enclose the printers properly. So uh, for those that don't know, the style that these printers are where the bed actually, this, so this is your Y axis here, so the bed is going to move forward and backward. So with the bed at maximum travel, I actually needed a little bit more than the standard two feet of shelving space. So you can see the back of the printer actually extends uh, a decent amount beyond the back of the shelf line there. So the shelf ends there and then that's the little bit of the enclosure or the extension I had to build to the enclosure so that the power cable for the heated bed wasn't ramming into the back wall of the enclosure setup. So I had to use some, basically I used some 2x6's that I mounted along the, the rail of the shelving there um, and I extended that off, it's about you know five and a half inches or nominal size for a 2x6 is five and a half inches. So just that extra bit of uh, extension off the back was able to get me the clearance I needed for the bed on both printers so that they could extend to max maximum or and minimum Y uh, while still being fully enclosed. And so by building that extension, it created a little bit of a gap on the bottom and top here. So I just used another sheet. I believe this is slightly thicker. This was either a half inch kind of MDF board that also had the coating or the white coating already on it. it was, this actually might be shelving material. I couldn't remember exactly, but that's what I used to kind of cover that gap that was created by building the extension off of the back uh, of the printing enclosure shelf here. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about for the enclosure build is kind of as far as the main overall structure and everything goes is my front kind of slider and acrylic windows here because this took me a while to figure out and that's actually why uh, this video has come out much later uh, than the videos that I've had in the past of building the other parts of this enclosure because I took a, a while to figure out exactly how I wanted to build the clear acrylic doors uh, to the printing setup. Now one of the main challenges challenges that I gave myself with these doors was that in normal circumstances my car here that's currently being worked on right now is actually parked right here so I couldn't have these front uh, clear acrylic doors swing open in any way and uh, collide in contact with the car because I didn't want to have to pull the car out of the garage every time I wanted to get into the enclosure setup to uh, modify something start a print etc etc so I had to build kind of this enclosure um, door system that it was unobstructive to the car when the car was parked in the garage. Now, I pondered many different designs and ideas before I landed on this final sliding door system here. You know, I thought of doing like kind of like a slide up style door. I thought of doing like a folding accordion style door. And then I also thought of doing like a flexible plastic like roll up shower curtain style door. And I'm really happy that I went with this design. It's worked really well so far. So what I ended up using was some aluminum C channel for the uh, support and the guide on the top and bottom here. I cut it to size based on the length of the shelving unit and then um, I used some magnets on the top to hold this, uh, the guide system on the top to the shelf so that I can easily uh, raise and lower the guide to remove the doors off the shelving system. And then what I uh, used for the actual doors was off Amazon. I just bought some eighth inch uh, two foot by three foot clear acrylic uh, windows here and I put some kind of like rubberized edge on them to protect the edges since they're pretty fragile and all they do is they just sit in the aluminum channels here and kind of go back and forth I don't even have handles on them just so that they can easily kind of uh, overlap each other just kind of like an old-school shower door and you know if I need to work on this printer I just push it this way if I need to work on this printer 
I just push it this way. Um, I could put, probably put some kind of like dry lubricant in the rail here and they'd probably glide a lot nicer, uh, but I just haven't gotten to that yet. And so far it's worked really well for me. That covers most of the structure and main features of the enclosure setup, but now I'm gonna talk about some of the more minute things that I added in to really make this a top-notch enclosure setup. So the first thing I'll talk about real quick are these little temperature and humidity sensors. So these things are Bluetooth enabled and link up with my phone. So they're from a company called Govi. So they not only display the temperature and humidity inside the enclosure uh, on the unit themselves, but as long as I'm within Bluetooth range, I can check the level on my phone as well. Now these don't obviously change the temperature or humidity inside the enclosure area, but I can at least monitor what the temperature and humidity is. So that's a really important feature to um, if you're trying to troubleshoot some material problems. Uh, and it's pretty remarkable to see. So you can see right now, it's about 60 degrees Fahrenheit inside this enclosure. With both printers running with the heated beds on a printing PETG, I've seen the temperature get as high as 90 degrees Fahrenheit in here. So it's pretty remarkable how much heat this uh, system is able to keep in uh, and enclose, which really helps, like I said earlier, uh, when you're printing some of those higher engineering grade level materials. So I'm gonna quickly talk about the filament uh, kind of racking and feed system for the two printers. I had to change it up a little bit so that I could fit both printers neatly inside the space here. Uh, this printer came with a bracket that mounts to the top of the gantry here that normally then would feed this way. So very similar to where it's set up now, uh, but I'll explain why I didn't like that setup here in a second. But with this printer, that same bracket would mount to this control box um, and then feed into the printer. And because the control box had to be so close and forward on this setup here, uh, that wouldn't work because this filament spool would run into this printer. So I actually, what I did was I took both of those brackets and mounted them uh, using screws here to the top of the shelving system here. Um, so both of these brackets are actually suspended off of the ceiling of the enclosure setup. So it's worked out really nicely. It obviously limits me on how far I can move the printers over with once I lock in uh, where these brackets are. But so far it's helped to really save on space and it hasn't caused any type of problems uh, with feeding the printer uh, the filament it needs. The reason why I didn't want to have the bracket mounted to the top of the gantry on this printer and I could have done the same for that printer as well is when you have a giant weight basically at the top and if you're printing a really tall item that weight can kind of start to move back and forth and vibrate and it can uh, actually cause some artifacts in your print if you're, if you're printing a really tall fine part. Part, um, when the printer is kind of going quickly back and forth, this weight kind of acts as a pendulum and then it can create vibration in the printer and cause problems with your print. So I wanted to get the weight off of the frame of the printer. One thing that I did have to do to the printers was uh, design and modify these little guide wheels for the filament going into the runout sensors on both printers. Because uh, the only downside with having the material directly above the printer and where it feeds in was that the filament was coming at a very harsh radius. So over time, after you know hundreds of hours of prints, the uh, abrasiveness from the filament making that hard turn into the runout sensor could start to eat away at the housing. So this little kind of extra guide wheel here that I designed and 3D printed helps to make it a more gradual turn into the runout sensor. So that was definitely a key piece um, that I needed to design and print and install onto the printers to be able to have them print successfully with the filament mounted above them like that. So the next little feature here that I've included in the enclosure setup are just two security cameras, one over here, and one over here. Now these are just little Yi Home uh, style security cameras that are used for just around the house in normal means, but for me, they work great by pairing with my phone to be able to monitor uh, how a print is doing. Now obviously I can't stop a print remotely, but I'm able to at least monitor the printer from my home, and uh, you know if I need to go run and stop the print or do something, you know I can check that using the, the, the live feed on my phone. So these uh, cameras were great. They connect to Wi-Fi and able, I'm able to get good enough Wi-Fi signal here out in the garage. So it's a great way to be able to monitor and uh, keep track of how your prints are doing for each printer. And they're both 1080p HD feed as well. 
One of the next big things I added into the design of the enclosure system was actually a ventilation system using this little fan down here. It actually kind of looks like a PC fan, which is basically what it is. But I wanted a way to be able to vent the system uh, when I start printing the materials that can emit some pretty gnarly fumes and particulates like I was talking about earlier. So basically what I did was uh, using the uh, wall here of the sidewall of the enclosure, I mounted this little uh, PC fan that's able to plug into a standard wall outlet so that's the PC fan right here and then I actually 3d printed this duct that um, amounts to using the exact bolt pattern for the fan and then turns down uh, like a 90 degree turn and goes also from a four inch diameter down to a three inch diameter to um, mate with this uh, dryer hose tubing so with the fan being mounted to the wall and then the duct here mounted to the fan, I used some dryer tubing with a hose clamp and routed the uh, air coming from the fan down, goes behind my toolbox here, out, and then it gets uh, vented outside here from this little uh, uh, grill that I have in my garage. So any fumes that are coming from the prints get pushed outside here. Now it probably, you know, isn't that big of a deal that I have this going on inside the garage because I'm not spending a ton of time in here, but it was just that little extra bit to make sure that if there's any kind of gnarly fumes uh, from printing certain, certain materials, it gets vented to outside. And I could easily add in kind of like a uh, inflow filter as well, which I'll probably be adding in soon, some type of charcoal filter that I can add in line to the hose or any of the the duct pieces there so getting to the last few features here uh, so I have this industrial power strip here that I mounted to the uh, 2x6 for the extension piece here so this industrial power strip is able to handle the load from both printers and all of the electronics and power devices running at the same time so make sure you have a sufficient power strip that will also protect your printers in case they have a surge from a a storm or anything like that so that's an important piece to have on your enclosure setup as well and then really the last feature that I kind of added at the very end to kind of organize some of my 3d printing specific tools here is this little uh, tool hanger that I got off Amazon so it's a really cool little piece here it's just a plastic kind of wall bracket so I mounted it to the enclosure wall using six bolts um, and it just houses all of my 3d printing specific little tools so here's my little filament snipper there you know I got some needle nose pliers some files so I have all of my 3d printing specific tools all ready to go right up here um, using this little mounting system so I got this off Amazon I think it was like 12 bucks and it just worked out awesome and then really quick down below here, uh, this is just a shelf for storing some kind of quick um, items. I have these little organizing trays that are great for storing spare parts, my little USB drives for the printers, I got some uh, compressed air in a can, you know, just little minute parts that I need. Um, I have blue tape here in case I need it, so it's a great way to store that. And then another thing that I just recently got was this kind of like mini dust buster, great for cleaning up the print area. And then obviously down here I've got a little trash can this is my uh, tote here my husky tote that I got from Home Depot um, that's sealed so it's a great way to store the filament and try and eliminate any uh, water intrusion uh, from the ambient air so it's not gonna be perfect but it's gonna be better than just leaving them leaving your open filament spools on a shelf and then I have tons of desk and packets at the bottom of this tote and then over here I've just got my little husky toolbox that's great for storing, uh, again, sprint, uh, spare parts for the printers and just uh, other little materials that I need to keep organized and neat as well. So that is pretty much my 3D printing enclosure setup. I've used this thing for about a month and a half, two months now, and it has worked so great. Uh, it's really helped to improve the quality of my prints in several aspects. Uh, so if you're looking to take your printing setup to that next level, um, definitely consider building something like this. Um, or if you have a common printer like the CR10, there's a lot of um, uh, kits that you enclosure kits that you can just buy and put together that just enclose the printer by itself. 
I know for sure that Matter Hackers has one for the CR10, and I'm sure there are many others out there for other similarly sized printers as well. So if you have two printers like I do, you can go ahead and build something like this. I know one thing do, uh, people do commonly is they'll go to like places like Ikea and find shelving systems or kind of like furniture systems that they can adapt and kind of put walls around. Or you can go like what I did and buy like an industrial style shelving system and then build your enclosure around that. So there's many different ways you can do it. Um, I just thought I'd share kind of how I decided to build mine um, because it really helps to improve the quality of your prints if you can keep them in an enclosed and somewhat heated environment as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from this video. Uh, if you have any comments or questions about my setup here or anything 3D printing related, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer them. If you guys haven't already, definitely subscribe for more, for many more 3D printing videos to come in the future. And other than that, guys, I will see you in the next one.